Hey everyone, um, back with another update on the rocket mass heater project. Um, what we got here is we got some fire bricks. Um, originally we had used these really dense fire bricks. These are the like I guess are the premium quality. They're really dense. Um, but with our design here for the burn chamber, it just we needed to notch these, and quite frankly, we couldn't find a way to really cut these efficiently. So what my partner did is he went out and bought these brick bricks. And they're fire bricks. The problem is is that they're what is it, three inches wide or tall or whatever that is. Yeah, they're three inches. Four and a half, just like those other bricks. Nine just like the other bricks, they're just three inches thick. Um, I believe part of that is due to the fact that the thicker it is, obviously the better the better job they're going to do at insulating. Um, the problem with that is, is that because this is a burn chamber, this is the part that sticks out of the stove, we don't want this thing to be ridiculously um, big. And if I take these, because how we're going to do it, um, we're essentially notching them. Let me see here. You see how this notches together like that? So they're going to sit. Each one of these has a notch like that. So basically, they're going to interlink like this. Then another one will sit here, and then it goes all the way around. What that does is that keeps these bricks from falling in on each other. Um, they're all going to be encased in steel, just regular mild carbon steel. Um, but with the insulating bricks, we won't have no problem with, with the steel burning out. And um, with this lip on here, we won't have any issues with the bricks falling in on, on themselves during transport. So, that lip is pretty important, so we're cutting these. That's what this video is basically, table. We're, we're cutting these bricks. Now, these bricks are substantially softer than the other. I can dig my fingernail into it. It almost feels like styrofoam, it's so soft. Like really dense styrofoam, but styrofoam nonetheless. Um, so, here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to cut these down to the size of those bricks, or ballpark. So, and I've successfully cut four of them. And how I'm doing that is I'm using my vintage Duro metal bandsaw and a very, very dull, horrible blade. Um, it cuts through it really well, to be perfectly honest, especially if the blade was sharp, it cut through it even faster. Um, you could actually cut these with just a regular handsaw. This is where I put these grooves in, and the groove is my line, so when I cut them on the saw, on the Duro bandsaw, um, I've got something to follow through, because you can't write on this because it just gouges into it. So, anyway, I'm going to show you guys the cutting process for that. Um, this is going to be a short video. Um, I don't, I don't know what these bricks are called. This is the only thing that I could really show you. PA 23. Um, this is the box that they were in. So I know that's sideways, but it is what it is. Um, I think that's the only numbers that I see. Yeah, they're all PA 23. So anyways, that's all I'm going to show you in this video, but I'm going to actually show you um, show you the process of me cutting one of these and how well they cut with a very, very, very dull, completely worthless bandsaw blade. Um, they're still able to cut fairly quick. So I'm going to set you guys on the tripod. We'll cut these up. This video is going to be short, and then look out for another one because I'm going to start assembling all of this. So talk to you guys in a second. Okay, so here's my Duro bandsaw. This is World War II era. Um, the motor is an external belt driven motor down here at the bottom. It is getting a little bit of the brick dust on it, but I'm not too concerned with it to be perfectly honest with you. Um, this saw 
is able to be geared up. It has a planetary gear system right here. So technically it's got four speeds because of the two different size pulleys and then the planetary reduction gears. Um, right now it's set for metal, but this would cut at the fast setting for wood. Um, but the reason why I wanted to tell you that it cuts wood is because that means the motor's um, ready to deal with dust and sawdust. So if it can deal with that, it can deal with this. I'm not too concerned with it. Um, I've showed you guys this in, in a previous video. I got this from a friend. Really nice saw. It just needs a new blade. It has um, it has non-standard blades in it, so I've got to get a blade cut for it. But anyways, that's not the point of this video. Let's get you guys on this tripod. Get you guys a close view and get this out of the way. So I'll talk to you guys in just a second. Okay, this might be a little bit loud. I don't know. The camera on my phone, or the microphone on my phone, picks up strange frequencies a lot louder than others. But I'm firing this up. <laughs> So there you go. <clears throat> you can see it's a nice clean cut. Um, whether if it's perfectly straight or not, it's not. You can see it's kind of odd, sh odd shaped, but that's fine because of what we're using these for. They don't need to be perfect. So anyway, um, part of that is the blade being dull and flexing, but it'll be perfectly fine for what we're doing. And that's all. That's the point. So. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like always, subscribe, comment, like. Check out the links in the description. Um, link to Alvarez Metal Works, the website. Um, Alvarez Metal Works on Facebook. Please go like us there. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, that link will be in the description as well. And that's it for now. Thanks for the support, and I'll talk to you guys later.